Good morning, everyone. I'm Robert Simons, and I'm the chair of the Port Moody 2010 Centennial Ad Hoc Committee. And it's my pleasure to welcome you to today's event. I'm especially pleased to welcome and introduce the Honorable James Moore, Minister of Canadian Heritage and Official Languages, and Member of Parliament for Port Moody, Westwood, Port Coquitlam. Minister Moore is a longtime resident of the Tri Cities area and today calls Port Moody home. He was first elected in 2000 and represents the constituency of Port Moody Westwood, Port Coquitlam. Mr. Moore is currently a member of the Cabinet Committee on Priorities and Planning, Cabinet Committee on Operations, and the Cabinet Committee on Social Affairs, and has worked hard for the Tri Cities and the province of British Columbia. Mr. Moore has come with some very exciting news. So please, without further ado, please join me in welcoming Minister Moore to say a few words. Thank you very much, Robert, uh, for being here today, for being the MC, and for uh, the kind words of introduction. Thanks yeah. to all of you as well for being here, um, for what uh, indeed was described. I think it's a very good announcement as well. Here in the gallery, where I'm on the, um, the Port Moody, I like the name of it now, by the way, the Port Moody Canadian Film Festival. Uh, is, uh, is, is happening here, showing some Canadian films, which uh, of course are great sources of pride for all Canadians. And I'd also like to thank Mike Clay, Mayor Portland, for being here. Um, it, you know, all, the entire cohort of Coquitlam is here as well. <laughs> Representatives from the Legion, uh, of course, uh, Mayor Stuart Dale Penner here all the way from the city of Port Coquitlam as well, and as well, many of you who are receiving funding here today. Once you start on the road of recognizing councillors, it's a kind of a constant thing. But thank you all, uh, <laughs> thank you all very much uh, for being here. You know, arts and culture is a massive part of the Canadian economy. Arts and culture represents $46 billion in the Canadian economy, which is to say it's about 640,000 jobs across the country. It's proportionally a much larger part of Canada's economy than almost any other country in the world. Arts and culture in Canada is a portion of our economy is three times the size of Canada's insurance industries. It's twice the size of Canada's forest industries. It is a massive part of Canada's economy. And as I say time and again, that any government at any level who claims that they have a plan for economic growth and recovery, and it doesn't have a plan for supporting the arts, is a government that doesn't have a plan for economic growth and recovery. They just don't. And what's equally important as well is that we're reminded that in 2017, Canada is going forward to celebrate our 150th birthday as a country. 150 years strong. And it's important to remind ourselves as well that while Canada is the second largest country in the world in terms of size, in terms of population, Canada is actually the 34th largest country in the world. And so what's allowed us to survive over the last 150 years, through all the divisions that we have in Canadian society, French and English and East and West and North and South and Aboriginal and non Vancouver Islanders versus mainlanders, developers versus environmentalists, this is a country that has had incredible divisions that we've overcome throughout all of our history. It's happened because of that can-do Canadian ethos that we're also very proud of that we reference again and again. But it's also because we recognize as a country that language, culture, the arts, the ability to communicate one to another, to tell stories, to share the past, to think about the future, to talk about controversies, and to have moments where we can all come together and celebrate the brilliance of Canada. Those moments are things that we value and that we cherish. So too is it true of the government of Canada, so too is it true of communities and organizations all across the country that do such brilliant work of drawing people together to talk about Canada's history and to think about and create for the future. And as we go towards 2017, Canada's 150th birthday, we also have a number of milestones between here and there. Of course, last year we had Her Majesty's Diamond Jubilee year. In this year as well, we will recognize the 100th anniversary of Canada's first Arctic uh, expedition in 2014. Uh, will mark the 150th anniversaries of the Charlottetown and Quebec conferences that paved the way to Confederation. We will also mark the 100th anniversary of the beginning of the First World War. And we will continue to recognize a number of very important anniversaries over the next few years leading up to our 150th birthday because they define who we are as Canadians. Which brings me to why I'm here today. The organizations represented in this room here today play an important role in enriching the lives of Tri-City residents. That's why I'm very pleased to announce investments of more than $1.6 million for 15 projects for the arts, sports, culture, and official languages, as well as official projects right here in the Tri-Cities that will continue to keep this community healthy, well, strong, and united as we head forward to our 150th birthday. You know, this year we are helping the city of Port Moody and the city of Port Coquitlam both celebrate 
their centennial years. It was just a couple of years ago that the city of Coquitlam was, of course, Canada's cultural capital. So you have a great deal to celebrate here in the Tri-Cities, in spite of enormous pressures of development, enormous pressures of traffic, enormous pressures of development up the valley that comes through our community, as we all know very well. In spite of all these stresses and strains and pushes on our community as we've developed and changed over the years, maintaining a Tri-Cities sense of identity, that unique Port Coquitlam sense of identity, that unique Port Moody sense of identity, the unique sense of identities in the Anmore, Belcare, and Coquitlam, the Fait Franca Fund, and Mayotte, and the Idiom, and the Town. These people don't realize as well that Millardville is the second largest, is the, sorry, is the largest Francophone settlement west of the Red River. The Francophone fact of the Tri-Cities is an important element of our past and our, in our history, and I hope it will be a part of our future as well. And the Port Moody 2013 Centennial uh, Committee has dedicated many hours to organizing activities and events for residents and visitors to Port Moody over the coming year. And as well, last Thursday, the Port Coquitlam Spirit Committee kicked off its centennial celebrations with community events and its evening gala as well. Et de plus, je suis très heureux d'annoncer au suite d'appui financier à la Société Francophone de Mayerville pour le Festival du Bois, un événement qui est énormément important pour le Fait Francophone ici. Funding as well, and today, from Western Economic Diversification, will support the revitalization of Coquitlam's Mac and Park, we will, which will include replacing the playground and constructing a new skate park there. And just next door, the same fund from Western Economic Diversification will enable the Port Moody Rec Center to replace the roof with new insulation, roof drains, and plumbing stacks. And I would also like to recognize the friends from the Royal Canadian Legion Branch 133 who are here. Uh, the Legion will also soon be benefiting from federal funding for upgrades to their interior space, which will mean that seniors and veterans and all those who come together at the Legion often will have indeed a nicer and better place in which to come together in our community. And over the past year, I think we've work together, all of us, and this is, I think, something to celebrate here at Tri-Cities. Again, in spite of all those pressures and elections come and go and personalities come and go and pressures change and dynamics are often, <coughs> are often always a, an interesting dynamic here in the Tri-Cities. In spite of all of that, I think all of us across all different perspectives have been able to work together to put the issues and priorities of the Tri-Cities first in a way, I think, for which we shall be incredibly proud. It was not that long ago, in fact, it was in the summer that uh, Mayor Stewart and I announced additional funding for the Evergreen Line Station at Coquitlam Centre, a centre that will indeed be a centre hub for all transportation for all of the Tri-Cities. Uh, this new branch, of course, the SkyTree, will not only connect the Tri-Cities to all of Vancouver, but will help bring all of our community together and serve us incredibly well. In last August, I joined Mayor Moore in Port Coquitlam, of course, to announce new investments in Westgard to help invest in jobs there in the city of Port Coquitlam. And as well, as you know, in our community, we've come together, we've worked together on really important files. There is, the, has been the ongoing issue of medical grow up, medical marijuana grow ups in the Tri Cities and the pressure of that. And municipalities across the Tri Cities have come to me and pushed for changes in that. And we are ending that program in order to protect the quality of life of people here in the Tri Cities because that is a program that has indeed failed miserably. And even on some of the issues that are really challenging um, socially and emotionally, um, issues like the need to stand up to people like Alan Schoenborn in the criminal justice system that fails victims in the Tri-Cities. We've come together and worked on those issues as well to the benefit of victims of crime. So we know that building a community isn't just bricks and mortar, it's not just funding one-off projects here and there. It's actually about working together on a consistent and a persistent basis to make sure that we have the best quality of life in the world. As I, I say time and again, that the job of any mem member of parliament, the job of any representative in any level of public office is not to always be to the right or always be to the left, or to always try to be right, it's to actually make decisions and improve the quality of life of your constituents. And when you look at the press release that we've handed out here today and that list of all the things that are getting funded here in the Tri-Cities, all these projects, all these events, I think we can be, be very proud that we live in the greatest place in the world to call home and that all of us working together from organizations to municipal councils and all of us working together to prioritize the needs of the Tri-Cities, we are indeed um, leaving a legacy for which we should all indeed be very proud, not only this year, but in 2017 for our 150th birthday. And, uh, and I'm very proud to be able to be here today to make this very large and important announcement for the health of the Tri-Cities in the coming couple of years. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Martin, for sharing that wonderful news with us. The mayors of uh, Port Coquitlam, Coquitlam, and Coquitlam are with us today. They represent the unique, vibrant, and dynamic cities that make up the Tri-Cities, along with the villages of Belcara and Anmore. Let me first introduce His Worship, Mayor Mike Clay, to say a few words on behalf of the City of Port Moody, which is currently celebrating its 100th year centennial. 
And today I'm old and tired. <laughs> and uh, Mackey Park is being rejuvenated. It is the jewel of South Kukwetlam. It is the only real park in my outfit in the older part of Kukwetlam. And having this opportunity to recreate a park that will serve its residents uh, so well into the future, uh, it's a great opportunity. Um, Kukwetlam is not just a Francophone community uh, any, anymore, as it was perhaps 100 years ago when Port Kukwetlam and Port Moody uh, made their decisions to create their own destinies. Uh, this, in fact, 100 years ago this month. Kukwetlam now is a multicultural community uh, for, with people from around the world, and they will join in celebrating at Pastes Alors, celebrating uh, at uh, Mackin Park and various other facilities that are being supported by these announcements and on behalf of the city of Kukwetlam. Uh, on behalf of our residents, uh, on all the Notre Conseil Municipal, merci beaucoup, thank you so much. Thank you much, Stuart. And now to say a few words on behalf of the city of Torco Willem. We're also currently celebrating the 100th year centennial. I'd like to introduce Acting Mayor and Councillor Daryl Hedder. Good morning, everybody. Even a rainy day like this is a great day to get money. <laughs> take it, it any time. And out of great respect for our Francophone uh, people, I will not be speaking French today. <laughs> so on behalf of the uh, of City of Port Coquillum and uh, our Council, uh, I am uh, pleased to be here. And thank you so much, uh, Honorable uh, James Moore, uh, for the generous funding contributions. As stated earlier, uh, the, these contributions mean so much to our communities. Arts and culture are so vital to, to the heart and the spirit of, of our communities that uh, it, uh, it really kind of defines you as a, as a community and as a society. And I think uh, it's interesting on the amount of money and effort that we put into uh, arts and culture. Uh, the funding that has uh, supported a long-standing vision and goal, uh, not only for our city, uh, but also for the residents and dedicated. Uh, dedicated. It's unwavering uh, heritage uh, leaders. On the 7th, March 7th, uh, the date that marked our 100th uh, anniversary uh, since its inaugural, we intrigued that dream by opening our display center. The Heritage at Lee Square Museum and Archives. And we have, and our staff and volunteers, uh, Steve Smith's here, uh, among other people, a volunteer, Mr. Smith, uh, spent an enormous amount of time, all of his own, volunteering, getting this whole museum and uh, center opened. Uh, and I would just like you to give him a round of applause. Along with our staff, intricate in that. Um, we had, at the opening of that, we had a fantastic uh, turnout. Uh, and uh, we had a wonderful uh, um, uh, event by the Coquitlam Band. Uh, they did just a fabulous job. Uh, the Building Communities Through Arts and the Heritage uh, Grant was uh, integral in meeting this milestone and seeing our vision becoming a reality. Notwithstanding this historical achievement, the funding that has been provided to our Spirit Committee has allowed us to earmark a number of legacy projects and celebrations in our 100th uh, birthday. These projects will contribute to the history of our community for many years to, uh, ahead. It's a great opportunity for residents to embrace our colorful history and at the same time uh, forward, look forward to uh, what's ahead in our community. We want to express our sincere gratitude to the federal government for partnering up with us providing service uh, providing support on a number of key events that will be held throughout our year uh, and throughout this whole year within the Tri-Cities. It's going to be quite exciting. Uh, as uh, we witnessed on March 7th during our birthday events, we're looking forward to the community coming together for mating and we're one of the only communities that has that long tradition of having uh, made a uh, a parade and the uh, early parades there were more people in the parade than there were in uh, watching <laughs> and uh, we even now we have a uh, tremendous turnout for this event um, so again I want to thank Uncle Moore very much for the funding it's much uh, appreciated thank you thank you Councillor Petter I want to express my sincere thanks Minister Moore, Mayor Clay, 
Mayor Stewart, and Acting Mayor Penner, for being here today. Your support of our communities is vital to their growth. At this time, I would like to invite Minister Moore back to the podium to take a few questions from me. Minister Moore. Thank you. 